Welcome everybody. Today we have uh, Daniel with us. Uh, Daniel is um, the author of Evolu, which is um, a very interesting library to do local first development um, with React. And um, it's built using effect. Uh, so that's touching on two of the most interesting trends that, that we have, at least for, for myself which are uh, local first apps and um, effect usage um, in, a, in a way that it targets the, the average uh, developer using, um, using React. I'll hand it over to Daniel to talk about Evolu, uh, why he's built it, how to use it, why should you use it, and, and, and how effect uh, helps him in maintaining uh, that infrastructure, which from what I can tell um, is fairly complex because I've been analyzing the landscape of local first apps for the past few years. And I've, I've been realizing that uh, the complexity is, is extreme and it's basically just like developing a distributed system uh, that starts with a single component in your uh, in your browser, but really has a has a huge complexity behind the scenes. Um, so welcome, Daniel. Thank you for uh, for taking the time today, and I'll hand it over to Hi. you. Hi, thank you for the introduction, and thank you you invited me and giving me a chance to present Evolu a talk about the local first and about the effect. I'm really glad what you did with the effect. I think it's a great thing, great tool. And um, I'm using effect all the way down in the Evolu. I was using FPTS before, so effect wasn't a completely new thing to me. And when the effect had finally uh, documentation, I decided to rewrite Evolu from scratch, of course, because uh, that's the only one way how to learn and test things how they really work so uh, evolu is a uh, not a simple uh, so, uh, it's not a toy project it is simple project maybe it's not as complex as you were talking because the, uh, the it could be much more complex than it is actually i uh, really tried to make it simple uh, not being a black box, but everyone should be able to read the Evolu source code and learn how Evolu works. And uh, by the way, learn how effect can be used in the bigger systems. So because the Evolu has the same problem as the effect, it's this some, some, somehow new and someone has to be the first who will test it and uh, have a skin in a game and that's all. So, okay. So do you want to see what Evolu is, how it works? Should Let's start. start, I, will start with the, I will start with the example. With Let's start screen. with the example. Yes. So as you can see, <laughs> this is famous, some kind of a to-do list, but there's more than that. There is a, basically what I should say, what, what the Evolu is, is the framework for local first application. But before the, explaining what the local first application is, I will, I would like to show it to you, um, so what is it? So let me reset the user. And I should say, I'm showing the Evolu on the Evolu Dev. <laughs> and five minutes before this talk, I checked whether everything is working and suddenly it didn't work. And I was surprised and panic attack. What the, what the fuck? Why the Evolu isn't working? I didn't change anything. <laughs> and funny thing is the it wasn't my fault. The Cloudflare uh, has a outage. Uh, is a dark Cloudflare is down. So <laughs> I will present uh, Cloudflare status. I will present the Evolu from the uh, from the. You can see it here. I will present Evolu from the local local uh, from the local uh, development but you can see everything can downs can goes down even the cloud flare can be down I was surprised it's working it doesn't 
it, that didn't work. The truth was the it was super slow because the Cloudflare is down, and that's one of the reasons why we need a local first software because local first software can work as you can see uh, can work even if the uh, the server is down but to present the sync syncing <laughs> uh, i have to go to the to the local host so uh, we have some database local database and i will uh, add some data high effect and I will add some relations and I will set it and now I would like to see those data on some different device and how uh, with all the changes and I should say the Evolu uh, prefers privacy foremost so there is no concept of accounts and there never be uh, so email collections or something like that. No, we have only the super secret password. It's uh, consists of 12 words uh, safely uh, generated on your device. And those words, uh, it's called mnemonic. It's the same concept the Bitcoin wallets have. I'm using the same cryptography. Uh, and those, these words is the only thing you can uh, present yourself. This is this should be this, this is a password. You should. That's your identity, basically. Yes, the, my identity. It's um, it's um, made from these twelve words with uh, uh, safely. You don't show. You don't share your share 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 a password. But um, it's called derivation. We use the, some derivation to extract your identity without showing your password. So it's called mnemonic and I will open a secret incognito window to uh, simulate different device and on a different device, I can restore my account. And as you can see, I restored it with uh, data so I can make high effect completed and it's Synced. Uh, so, Evolu is a local first framework for your ownership of your data with secure synchronization and backup uh, among your devices. Uh, it's a lot of more. I will tell you more details soon. But you can, as you can see, it's super simple. Mnemonic. Uh, some people say that with Bitcoin, you can be your own bank. I would say that with Evolu, you can be your own cloud. And it's important to have an ability to be your own cloud because you don't have to depend on some cloud. Uh, uh, because for many reasons, I will explain. In fact, uh, explain Evolu again. You can see I, it's synced on different device. The, the Evolu server is actually very simple. It's uh, just a message buffer. You can run your own. And the only thing the Evolu server sees is the timestamps and some encrypted binary data. So there is no configuration. The Evolu server is generic for all kinds of applications. So it's basically an append only log where you post messages that are encrypted with your mnemonic. So as, exactly. as long as you remember your mnemonic, you can hush the mnemonic, get to your uh, your own ledger, which may be even replicated in multiple places, and you continue to append stuff. Yes, it's not even encrypted with your mnemonic that would, wouldn't be safe. It's encrypted by a password derived from your mnemonic. Uh, recently, the Evolu was reviewed by my friend, a cryptographic engineer, uh, and he we together improved some uh, security things in Evolu. And of course, there will be proper full uh, security review when I will release it. But I should say it's already released because it's stable. Uh, the core algorithm didn't change for maybe one year. And all I'm working on the last months is the preparing for production. So, so yes, but it's append only lock and 
Yes, so it is most strict local first. Local first, so you saw the demo, demo, and show, now I will show you some code and some, this I will talk very quickly about some design decisions behind the Evolu. Uh, maybe I should, I will tell you a short story why I decided to make Evolu. I was working on an application for sharing things among the friends and as soon as I realized me as the as a application developer I don't want to see what things people share among themselves from a lot of reasons legal etc so it has to be encrypted and the second uh, realization was uh, it must work offline and ability to work offline isn't something you can add in your application after you made it ability to work offline it's it's feature that must be uh, this important from the day one where are you writing an application with ability to work offline is a completely different architecture from the client server as we know so i trying to i was trying to figure out how such application should be written <laughs> i made a lot of mistakes uh then i found a local first local first famous local first manifesto from ink and switch local first software your own data in spite of the cloud and i was in love from beginning because that was exactly what i wanted but uh there wasn't and still isn't any reliable tools I was able to use. So I have to figure out how such a uh, framework should work. And I have to figure out CRDT, what it is, how it works. Uh, and to be honest, <laughs> uh, it wasn't as hard because I saw the great and famous talk from James Long about the talk, the talk name is CRDT for Motors. I highly recommend this talk to anyone. It's because before this talk, I thought the CRDT and local first must be something super hard and super, super complex. It is hard if you don't know how to do it. <laughs> if you know how to do it, it not it's surprisingly hard. simple at the end. <laughs> Yes, it's surprisingly, but you have to follow some rules and I would say it same everywhere. Uh, for example, economic as a science isn't as hard if you have good resources, but without the resources, you are completely lost. And the same, so it's kind of from zero to one problem. <laughs> I highly recommend to watch this talk for anyone who is interested in CRDT for uh, CRDT and the local first uh, and James used this approach for his, his own application actual budget what was it was and, personal and just to spell it out for um, some of the folks who may have never heard about CRDTs that's an acronym that stands for conflict flee replicated data types if I'm not mistaken Exactly, yes. conflict free replicated data type is the with local first, you have to uh, give up some constraints, or I should say, handle some constraints in a different ways uh, to succeed. For example, as I said, as you said, local first is distributed system, so there is no single source of truth. There are <laughs> two truth, and you have to some. Choose, for example, you are making the changes on two devices. Both devices are offline. Then both devices go online, start the syncing, and you have to figure out how to sync those data. But it's not as hard as it sounds. For the simple cases, uh, all you need is last right win. But with last right win, you also need to maintain the history in case the the last right is not the right is not the uh, right you sh that should win. So you have to maintain the full history, and as you said, it's append only block. So uh, I decided to 
for the application for sharing thing among the friends which I <laughs> didn't write such application maybe I will but I made a framework instead uh, the framework name is Evolu. it's uh, mainly based on the work of the James Long uh, there is different concept of CRDT, but I still think this is the most simple and most powerful and it's good enough to me. It's always a trait of simplicity, complexity, and this thing is working to me very well. So Evolve is designed for privacy, ease of use, and no vendor lock-in. And if you open the documentation, let's talk for a minute about local first application because i think the local first term became something like buzzword you if you will google you will see local first here local first there a uh, lot of it's cloud like cloud native yes cloud native or serverless or something like that now it's popular term and it's it does and doesn't mean one thing anymore uh, for some people local first is everything what what can work offline or even the with some kind of cash on the client well it's local first to me the local first is something much more important it's mainly about the data ownership data ownership because uh, there are me as a human being i'm producing a lot of data i don't want to lose never so it's important those data are stored in my sql database not in some uh, esoteric format but classic sql database so i re i'm really owning those data all data not to back up it independently and stuff like that yes not subset not cache but all my data in my local my, my local database but of course if i have a local data in my device I have to sync those data among my devices. And that's why the most important thing to me is the privacy. Without the exception, Evolu encrypts all your data by default. You can opt out that. Some could say it's a, uh, it's a feature. It's a feature because of course, Evolu is not everything. Nothing is for everything. I have no problem that my grocery list is shared with company who is selling me the food, but there are some kind of data I don't want to share with anyone. So that's why the Evolu uh, is focused on privacy and uh, encryption is mandatory. Is the data also encrypted at rest locally or just when you transmit over the network? only when the transmit or the network because uh, you of course you can encrypt your uh, your database but uh, much better is to encrypt your entire hard drive with the tools so uh, because of the performance uh, data are encrypted for the syncing and unencrypted when you receive the encrypted data that's fine. I mean, nothing prohibits you from also writing encrypted data to Evolu in itself if you want to do another layer of encryption uh, in your own. So yes, but it would be a uh, security by obscurity. You should encrypt your hard drive and, uh, and uh, yes, you should encrypt your hard drive and may maybe if some, and for even more privacy, I have a different strategies because there's one data, once data are in computer, they are never 100% safe because the computer can be hacked or et cetera. So for super security data, uh, super secure data should never enter in the, uh, in the computer device because computer device can be hacked. So uh, privacy is the scale, it's not binary. Uh, it's you can say it's 100% it's never is it's safe so it's scale not binary and for super secure data my plan is to use evolved hardware wallets which is a, which is a simple device very hard to hack you know so it's gradually so so to me it doesn't make sense to encrypt local SQL instance 
you, you should encrypt your hard, hard, hardware, uh, dev, uh, you should encrypt your computer, your own book, and for super secure data, you should don't use computer at all, you should use specific hardware devices. Does it make sense? Oh, well, that's, that's fine. It's, I mean, it's a model that, that many uses, if I think even like the signals, the WhatsApps and so on and so forth, data is only encrypted in transmit. Um, in transit, not not really on your uh, on your local device. Yes, Just... because the responsibility, the, 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 the encryption for application is responsibility of the operation system. So, and the last point is no window lock in. No window lock in because uh, there are few local first libraries. Local first libraries, but it's Local first is umbrella term, so I can say it's local first, but not as strict as my local first. Uh, that you still have to maintain some third party service, some some middleman, one, one could say, uh, and that's not I want from Evolu. So the Evolu has a very simple Evolu server, as I said, it's just a message buffer. You can run your own. Or you can, and it's my plan as a business, you can uh, use my uh, my Evolu server, but you don't have to maintain anything. The Evolu server is generic. Evolu server is generic for any kind of application. So it's open source and anyone can, but doesn't have to run their own. So Evolu server provides sync and backup for Evolu clients. Some people could say and, why- And even, even if you, use your server i mean if um if me as a consumer use uh, the evolu cloud services i'm not i'm not shipping my data i'm shipping an encrypted version of my data you, yes that's, that's why you, you 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 don't have to maintain it because there is nothing to maintain <laughs> uh, all i see is a timestamp user id and encrypted data of course so and the device ID which is stored in the in the timestamp because you uh, that, that, that's all. So uh, it's super generic for all kind of the local first application. Uh, yeah. So uh, and as I said <laughs> just before the talk, uh, Cloudflare went down. <laughs> so I'm, I'm using I'm leveraging the Cloudflare D1, the new SQL database because. When I was thinking about the Evolu server, how to make it really fast and really cheap, I designed the architecture, <laughs> which which is actually Cloudflare D one. Yes, so basically it's SQLite in the cloud, uh, uh, and uh, it has some specific um, features uh, for reliability, speed, and replication around the. Uh, for to me, I don't have a problem with one server because writing it's not an issue to me because when i'm using the evolu i'm writing primarily locally and uh, i don't care if the write took even two three seconds i don't care because it's optimistic update i'm using optimistic updates uh, i i shouldn't say it's optimistic i just update local data and but what i want is the super fast reads super when you open your notebook and you, you need to, I need to sync your data as quickly as possible. And that's what Cloudflare D1 provides. And it's so cheap. So I'm thinking about the Evolu will be probably for a small amount of data, like one megabyte, it should be free forever. Because it's so cheap, so cheap uh, that uh, I have uh, different business plans with Evolu. So I think I, I'm able to I will be able to provide Evolu for personal usage for free forever. It's so cheap, one cent. I mean, if it's using D1 or a, or a similar system, there is basically no server to maintain. That's literally a file on a replicated hard drive, which is dynamically accessed by multiple processes when, uh, when needed. It's, oh, oh, I, it's oh, hyper fast. I... It's... <laughs> Yes, and all I need from SQL is just one index and tell me new, give me a new sync messages from some timestamp. And so it's, uh, 
so it's a very simple but i should uh, i should say i do, didn't solve a collaboration yet it's for your personal data one of the reasons i didn't uh, solve the collaboration is there are so many collaboration libraries so many collaboration libraries and uh, not, none of them is encrypted maybe one new just tools i so yesterday should be uh, but it's not ready for production yet so i need to rethink the collaboration base on same strong privacy with public private cryptography as evolu has but it's not, not nothing that, that, that doesn't it's not showstopper it doesn't block you local first is for your your precious precious uh, secret data so uh, that's how it works got the talk uh why evolu i always said evolu i have very strict requirements so i had to make an evolu because there's nothing uh, like local first library as strict as evolu to me uh so that's why i'm using evolu and maybe i should start with the i should so show you some code probably uh how evolu works are you interested in yes let's see how it works how it works in i should say it's a really uh, simple but powerful and the only two strange things inside is how evil works with timestamps and miracle trees timestamps are to ensure all sync messages have the same order across different device i'm using hybrid logical clock it's the relatively old pattern from distributed systems i will sh it's a few line of code so i will show you it soon and i'm using the merkle tree merkle tree for uh syncing when you have very two very long arrays lists of messages you need to figure out what should you think without uh, comparing every item in the array? And it's exactly uh, what Miracle Tree is for. So everything starts with a mutation. Uh, Evolu has a very simple API for mutations. Evolu is, I should say, Evolu is SQL for reading, but mutations are limited because of CRDT uh, and to have an ability to merge changes without uh, conflicts so for uh, for reading we have full sql in the form of kisseli i don't know if you know the kisseli kisseli is wonderful uh, way how to write typed sql basically you will define the schema schema for a database the schema for a database is you you define the tables and you define uh columns and, and i see that you do that using schema yes i'm using the uh, schema i'm there's a f yes <laughs> a schema from effect and branded types from effect <laughs> which is somehow 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 it's funny i was teaching functional programming and the people was uh, looking at my slides and wasn't entirely sure whether it's good or not and they didn't knew anything about uh, branded types and they was wow branded types uh, for the listeners who don't know what the branded types are you can see title of to do this isn't just a string it's a string that is not empty and with some length and uh, the branded types is the feature it's not feature it's the how to emulate uh, nominal types in the typescript and effect effect ecosystem provides uh, tools for working with the with the branded types so and because local first is my local database i have to be strict about the data uh, so someone accidentally wouldn't store a huge string you know because uh, the space on the mobile phones is scarce so i'm using some kind of prepared schema for people and of course you can make your own uh, branded types 
based on effect schema. So I'm curious, you, you, you built um, some kind of converter from, from schema to what Kelsey requires for the, for the syntax. Because from there you derive an SQL client, basically. Uh, again, the question is... I mean, it, when you use the use query, you get a, a database yes. instance uh, which knows about the types and so on and so forth. Yes, yes, yes. I defined a schema. It, it's using a branded types. And because of Kisseli, because of Kisseli, this is a library, great library, you should know it, Kisseli. Uh, Kisseli. Everything should know. Do you see the screen? Yeah, yeah. So uh, Kisseli is type safe SQL query builder. And I'm using types, it's also for developer experience because once you define the schema based on effect schema, you have basically autocomplete and branded types and uh, everything. So, but it's not you have to generate a Kisley schema from the effect schema or how does, how does Kisley know about the types? I don't have to generate anything. It's super e easy. It's this uh, database. Uh, here is it. I'm passing database. This is just the schema type. And what Evolu is does is infer uh, the use query, use mutation functions. I'll, that's why I have to create them because they are already uh, typed from the from the schema. Do you see that? Yeah, yeah. So, so in Evolu, I have. I will show you example here. Uh, select from and do you see table? Yeah. And when I'm, and you can see the the select is fully typed. ID is ID to do category, category ID, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Branded types is a wonderful feature I'm using. I can't imagine writing a software without the branded types and without the effect any anymore. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's the disease aspect that comes from effect. Once you learn it, there's no you, way back. No way back. No, you, you can, you can't unlearn this. You, all you can, you can mimic it somehow without the effect. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's uh, like, uh, uh, yeah, not disease, but it's, it's spread like virus. <laughs> or no, it's not, not a good comparison. Well, it's can, a positive virus, come on. Positive virus, you, you can't unlearn good things. Once you figure out how it works, uh, you will be in love. So yes. Uh, in Evolu, everything starts with the effect schema, as you can see. Uh, I prepared some types for people who don't have to make their own, make their, their own types, but of course they can make over. This is how you can define non-empty string with max length. You can see how simple it is. Evolu string pipe. Uh, Evolu string is a special type because of JSON support uh, is detailed, doesn't in, uh, in case you are curious why I'm using this string and not the schema effect schema string, that's because the string has some uh, other validation inside. So in Evolu, every string must be uh, extended from Evolu string. So everything started with, this, with, with the sch database schema, then I will create use query, use mutation, and Now you can see uh, mutation. Mutation has to be somehow limited. And, and uh, the create function returns immediately because it writes to the local database. So it does a, a SQL insert and just returns. So that's it a simple it, API. It, it returns, it actually returns created ID immediately. And the funny thing is it can't fail. 
There is There's no, no way it can fail. Yeah, yeah it writes no, locally. Yeah, yes, it's local. It's local. There is no reason why it should fail. There is no uh, no internet offline. No. Uh, there's no there's internet no, connection going on there. There's no internet connection. What can fail is sync sync, but the synchronization will succeed when the internet is online again. But the funny thing. Well, I mean, there is the file write, but that's definitely an exception. Yes, but uh, that's the not thing you should handle when you are uh, saving and creating things. There, uh, Evo has one uh, global error handler for. Uh, when the write can file from whatever reason, probably uh, storage is full. Uh, actually, we can't de uh, detect the storage is full. So uh, Evo has the one global handler with some kind of three or four uh, errors, which can it's very super rare. Basically, you don't have to maintain. Well, if you it will if if, if it will happen, uh, you don't you can do with such error anyway anything yeah so, there's no there's no way you can handle that error there's all you can is is the lock it and uh, uh and tell me the, something was wrong but it should uh, it's there is no recovery from that state so and uh, but it's quite uncommon uh you will see how uh, uh how this errors looks like. So everything started with the mutation and mutation API are, are somehow limited because for example, it wasn't be hard to support every SQL mutation, but it's dangerous for local first data because someone can could accidentally update all the rows and then the sync batch would be huge. You would generate a lot of the append lock would be super huge. So this API somehow forced the developer to, uh, to and protect developer uh, against the accidentally create a lot of lot of uh, CRDT. And especially if you if you use the p class write principle, if you over update data you risk to lose intermediate updates because you have a row i may have update the name you may update the, the, the surname there are two non-conflicting updates they can reconcile but yeah yeah, yeah exactly. every time i update the full row yeah i change the surname you change the first name after your wins and my my change is erased so it also minimizes the the potential conflicts if I'm not if I'm not mistaken yes exactly 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 that's uh, that's a feature it's not a bug that's some trade-offs of local first software uh, some uh, companies are trying for example to figure out how to do the transaction but the offline tra transaction doesn't make sense because you know uh, who should decide which transaction is uh, uh, valid. Both devices can make some transaction. So they are experimenting with branching, etc. And this is the, still the uh, area of the research. Uh, and I don't think it's a showstopper or some blocker. And actually, I described such situation in the documentation for mutation. Uh, uh, where is this? Uh, in somewhere in guide and in uh, yes. So yes, that's that's the API of Evol is very simple and trade offs are described somewhere in a documentation and in uh, comments in uh, in the in, in those functions. You, you you know if you will take a look at the crate. So use mutation. You will see some uh, trade offs described described how it. So the mutation are somehow limited, but the we have the full queries and I should however works the overview the big picture so everything starts with the mutation uh, we, in Q micro task we make an array of muted items this is the description of has been changed in the database and so, uh, we and we generate CRDT messages 
basically description which table which row which column and which value was changed and we assign a timestamp timestamp for every change and the magic of crdt one of the few is the how the timestamp looks like it's not just the time it's the time which has to be unique among all devices so there is some note id it's the id of the device and there is also a counter which is a fail safe for a situation when the computer clock fails it computer clocks are unreliable they can accidentally go backward or be the same and if the such situation happens the there is some strategy how to work with such timestamp and it's the all the magic of the hybrid vertical clocks this one uh, basically if you will take a look in the evolu code the all magic is uh, timestamp here and the merkle tree timestamp uh, and as you can see, it's not a lot of code. It's a well-tested code. Both code is relatively short. You know, I said the Evolu is simple yet powerful. Uh, basically, we have to ensure the time stamp is always increasing in the time. So we can ensure the order of messages, even if some clock of some of the device is wrong. If we detect such situation, we instead <coughs> we can't increase the time, the milliseconds. We have to increment the counter. So it's the simple algorithm, but it's very powerful, you know. And if we receive some remote changes, again, we are uh, maintaining the timestamp on every device and checking if if the timestamp can be increased and if not we use the various strategies and of course and now i can show the effect why the effect is so important to me because this function receive timestamp we can see this function needs time and config to be testable of course this is the effect service dependency and such function can fail with, for three different reasons for example if the clock is if the clock is uh <coughs> wrong by few minutes it's that it, it it not a problem it can happen but if the drift clock is huge then we can't accept such message and we have to uh fail with error so here you can see the how I'm leveraging the great effect API. And actually you will, you will see a lot of such effect APIs. With I see that you embraced the generator syntax. Yes, I generator syntax is, is great. Yeah. For, for example, this is a function for handling sync response. So some server, and you can see there's a lot of dependencies it makes everything this dependency addition is great and that what makes evolute a stable and also that what makes evolute multi-platform because evolute works for react and react native and we have a different sqlite on diff and we have the same api but different implementation uh <clears throat> so and yes generators i love them because one <laughs> the biggest issue i had with fpts i was trying to express everything like as a pipe that's not possible or maybe that's it's not easy it not definitely it's not readable pipes from functional programming are great when you have a simple data manipulation but if you have some kind of logic business logic <laughs> business, business logic business logic uh, then the generators are awesome and the funny thing is in web browser the sqlite is synchronous but in the react native it's actually asynchronous oh really 
Really, yes. And but with, with effect, we have the same API for sync and async code. And SQL itself is pluggable. So uh, this code runs uh, sync or async de depending on the platform. Uh, in the packages, you can see uh, many packages. Evolu is consistent. I recently, I recently split one Evolu library in the several libraries. The platform independent code, all the business logic, all the tests, etc., are in Evolu Common. Then we have Evolu Common React. There is a logic which is the shared uh, between Evolu React and Evolu React Native. But I also prepared Evolu for another frameworks like uh, like uh, SolidJS or Svelte. And such a code is in Evolu Common Web. Uh, you can ask what is in Evolu Common Web. That's the uh, that's the SQLite. It's the same everywhere. <clears throat> and also the workers are the same everywhere. Uh, Evolu do not block the main thread. Well, if you will make a mutation, Evolu will send it was shown here. Evolu will create new message and actually Evolu is actually proceeding the does the exit encryption and syncing in two web workers to do not block uh, local mutations. So syncing is not blocking local mutations and local mutations are not blocking the main thread, which is great. So, uh, but <laughs> another thing, React Native, in React Native, there is no support for web workers. So in a React Native, we have to choose a different strategy. And yeah, wait, we... wait a second, just one yes. question. You said you basically have code in effect that runs both synchronously or asynchronously based on the context. But the create API that you've shown before is perfectly synchronous. So I'm curious which parts of the SQL light is uh, asynchronous versus uh, completely synchronous. I, 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 can, I, I may I, have I, misunderstood the, I which maybe it's the, it's the initialization. Is the... This is the wrapper among the, this is the wrapper, uh, this is the, actually this is a, it's the same API, but itself SQL exec is synchronous. There is no, this code, this piece of code is synchronous. Got it. And in React Native, there is, I'm leveraging the same API, but different implementation and effect layers are great for that. Uh, and you can see I'm using effect promise here. Uh, yes, so the same code. Uh, actually, both code are run uh, with run promise. It's not a run sync. I would switch it, but I don't remember quite. I don't. The thing is, I don't care <laughs> because the the API is the same to me. Uh, it's the just just an implementation detail that internally, internally SQL in React Native is a, a sync and SQL, la, SQLite in web is sync. I have SQLite, this is the interface and I'm using that interface. So does it make sense? Yeah. 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 Uh, as I said, uh, the <clears throat> in React Native we don't have uh, threads, and in React Native we don't have web workers. <clears throat> so actually, in React Native, I have to run DB worker in the main thread. But uh, there is a different techniques in there is a different te techniques in React Native how to not block the main thread main thread and it's the leveraging inter interaction uh, interaction manager and this is a 
uh, API I have to imp yet implement. But I think it will be uh, easy with the effect. It's basically uh, something like I'm, uh, uh, when the user is not using the uh, application and there is a space run after in this function run after interaction i have to integrate uh, into react native to do it's some kind of the request animation frame something like that uh, yeah you probably that. need to implement um an effect uh, scheduler that that yes. uses these yes. uh, these instead of others and that's actually a very common uh, a very common thing even like if you do a lot of work in the main thread in in the ui in a in a, in a web browser uh, you you have to do something similar uh, by using for example request idle callback uh, to avoid um, one part of your application starving all of the all of the resources luckily enough effect all, all, all runs in fibers and the fibers are invoked by schedulers so if you control the scheduler <laughs> you control everything Yes, how many I, operations are run and everything else. That's the part I'm looking forward to implement actually, because that 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 the part that will leverage effect a lot, <laughs> uh, because the scheduler in the web I don't have to because I moved all the logic in the web broker, but in the React Native I don't have such a, a possibility, so I will have to leverage the effect scheduler and. I will probably ask you for a help. <laughs> I will be implementing. You're very welcome. <laughs> I will implement it very soon. So I think uh, that's. Uh, uh, I showed everything. As I said, uh, the. Wow! Well, uh, I closed it accidentally. So let me show the code again. So the evolu is the only strange code there is can be uh, encryption, but I'm using uh, third party libraries. Uh, in evolu common, it's full of uh, interfaces and common React, common web are live implementation. implementations. So one thing I should say, it's definitely possible to write such code with, without the effect, but you would have to invent your own convention. Uh, to me, the most, one of the most great features of the effect is, is kind of template how you should write the code. So you don't have to make your own uh, template or uh, coding style. You know, every every developer has a slightly different coding style than different developer. But if all of them are using effect, they write the similar code. And this is super important because the code is much more often read, 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 read than the write, if you understand me. So uh, it would be, I, I was thinking how I would write evolve without the effect it would be possible definitely but i have to uh, invent my own kind of dependency injection my own kind of the handling the errors based on return values somehow i would have to invent effect <laughs> if i have to would write the uh, evolve without the effect well I, I have come to the realization that effect is some sort of standard library for yeah. for a good for the good or the worse but uh, it can be described as a as a standard library and the second realization i've come to is that there is no standard library in javascript no or in typescript no. No. so having a thing that actually standardizes how we write code is is a plus and um, I know some, some of the, this is both a pro and a con because, um, effect is a leaky abstraction. If you, if you write code with effect, leaky. the reader has to know effect. Yeah. It, yes. it, it leaks outside. If you're calling into code that uses effect, you gotta know effect. 
Uh, I wouldn't say that's a leaky abstraction. Leaky abstraction is abstract is basically abstraction that doesn't work, and that's why it's leaking. Uh, it's a just no. I would say it's leaking into the hair. It's voluntarily leaking. It's like, straight it's... off. It's straight off. It's a tool. It's a tool. Learn the tool, then and use the tool. And without a tool, you would have to invent the tool. <laughs> Maybe you should rewrite the why effect <clears throat> because the the explanation when I'm teaching and explaining to people what the effect is and I'm trying to be concise, just a few words, I'll telling them, I'm telling them typed errors are great, but also the short circuit in the pipeline is very important. It's because, because you basically are writing happy day code path with handling all those errors in the one place. It's some, uh, I learn from this kind, I learned that from the railways oriented programming, programming from Scott Vlashin, it's from F sharp. And then I realized the effect is what F sharp people have in their word syntax. I can use all those nice things in the TypeScript without a problem. And of course, the uniform shape or structure of the application without the mut in classes, mutations, or this kind of the things which are slowing down us a lot. Because you always, instead of the domain problem, you have to think how to express the, 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 the domain problem. And yeah, I mean, and, and the, the, the good aspect is, for example, uh, I'm, I'm just checking your repository while, while we're talking. I, yeah. I'm just having a look at the, at the repository in my own, in my own interface. And I, I, in, in my thinking, I was like, okay, how would I go about integrating Evolu with a different UI framework that's not React? Well, the steps I would take are kind of obvious to me. I would create another package that implements the same interfaces with a specificity to that framework. None, I don't have to know any other part of the code to actually do uh, that. You would probably build, would take a look and Evolu React, you see. I would literally copy Evolu React, adapt <laughs> it for, to my own framework and expect <laughs> <Yeah>. it to work. <laughs> because you are uh, programming against the interfaces and the interface yes. is there. So I, it took me two, three days uh, to split what abstractions and implementations. So you you see, you need the uh, BIP39, uh, some cryptographic dependencies and you, uh, the, the, the Evolu React and Evolu React Native are just the composition roots. It's the, just the function where you join things together somehow. So, uh, the basic, the basic object in Evolu is uh, Evolu itself. Evolu, Evolu, come on, where is it? it it's also funny because um... it is, this is the thing you have to implement. Do you see that? Yes. Evolu. So you have you have this is the without the React you have with some another kind of another UI library. This is what we have to map to your UI framework. So you subscribe query. SQL query, uh, you can, uh, for React Suspense, which is a great feature, you can uh, probe the query. You are a syncing state and you are subscribing the owner and you have uh, very simple mutations. Create, update, or owner actions is actually create over and reset or restore. Or you can enforce the database schema and will update uh, your schema, enrich your schema as changed. So as you can see, Evolu API is very simple. The React is just binding for those few few functions and methods. And that's all, that's all. And it's it's actually a very nice example of, um, more, more lately, lately we've been kind of receiving multiple times the same uh, question from, from different people. And it's, I would like to use effect, 
but none of my users are using effect. And um, my API of my library shouldn't have really, my users shouldn't have to know effect to use it. Now you, you kind of did that in a, in a nice way because your users don't have to know effect at all. They get one update function, one, one create function, and so on and so forth. The, the, the top of Evolu, the API doesn't, doesn't talk about effect in any way. They're going to no. know about effect because you use schema and they probably have to install an effect package to use uh, Evolu. But yes. apart from those two elements, they just use plain React code and they just write plain SQL queries, which is both things they're used to do, uh, hopefully, in, in, your, in your target. There is so, yeah. one, yeah, yes, there is one place I'm leaking, I'm not leaking uh, uh, effect, I'm just uh, exposing the promise instead of the effect. So the people don't have to know the effect, they are using the, prom the promise. And it's the, um, I will show you where is it. It's the owner actions. Yes. <laughs> Do you see that? Yeah. This is a place I, uh, didn't I choose do not return effect to do not co do not confuse people and instead of that I'm returning the promise with the I mean you you could also expose a restore effect if if one wanted you call sure, it def definitely but it's just just one function so yes I I I, I could but I, I, I as you said I'm using effect everywhere for everything. And, but I do not expose it because there is no reason to expose it, for example. So, yeah, but, I mean, in, in your, you're building a, a very specific library. You don't, by paradox, you don't have any side effect because you're <laughs> <laughs> almost close to like, you uh, expose I, mute, things that do mutation and so on and so forth, but they are native to the, to the React ecosystem. They are fully synchronous. They cannot fail. Uh, the query cannot fail also because you're querying a local database. They may return empty, but they're never there, There's empty. one use evolve error uh, in evolve. It's, it's, it's subscribe, subscribe error. There's a place where you can uh, subscribe errors. So there's a kind of side effect in evolve. Uh, maybe I should show, I should show, but this is more of a, of a global. Uh, yes. This is a global handling. things. Uh, basically, uh, <laughs> what can, what can happen? This is the er all errors that can happen in Evolu. It's a timestamp drift error, counter overflow error, duplicate node error, or unexpected error, of course. Oh. And that, that, that's, all, that's all. That's all what can ha happen uh, in Evolus. So basically, But yes. all of those are very global in the sense that if they happened, there's, not, there's no specific action you can take except maybe to show an error message saying, yeah. yeah. We don't know and what then, happened. Then, then that's what the example does. It just showed uh, uh, some message and the instruction for every the, uh, users is uh, log it. And uh, if you will see something, tell me. But you shouldn't see see something. Uh, or timestamp error can happen if some device have, has very drifted clocks, but uh, it's super rare. I haven't seen that error yet, so probably it must be made not accidentally, but uh, I saw must be a result uh, of some sort of uh, exploitation. Yes, yes, I saw unexpected error in cases of the third party dependencies, which I can't fix anyway, so. Uh, Yeah, again, nothing, nothing expected. If it happens, it's a bug. It's yeah. a, it's a malfunction of some, of some component. Your yeah. main API is not. Yeah, I would not. I have. Would, I should say that I brought the uh, effect in Evolu 
uh, <laughs> by myself and I hope someone from the team will find the time to review if I'm not doing anything wrong, but I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. Maybe maybe I'm not doing something ideal, maybe maybe uh, because the effect has a great developer experience, experience, a lot of different functions. So instead of writing three different functions, there is possibility it should be possible to write just one, uh, especially yeah, some yeah. like in, or something. In, in any in any code base that I have ever seen, there is this description. It works, it's not perfect, can never be perfect. <laughs> I, 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 myself, I, I have no idea about all of the functions inside effect. I might, I might know more of, of, of you or, or, or I actually might know less because many, like those functions come from many different use cases, many different people, contribution over time. I think from, from what I can see, the code is well modularized, which is the, the good starting point to make it, to make it nice at the end. Probably one, there's thousand things to, to improve. The modularization, one, one thing I should, I would like to share with people if someone is still listening that, uh, how I finally achieved the good modularization of the code. It's because when I started, I had the model with names types and the model file types.ts, I moved all types in just one file, but th then realized that file was becoming huge. So when I was rewriting evolute to effect, I tried to do not have some kitchen sink file for all your types. It's good to have such kind of file for domain logic for an application, but as the Scott Vlashin is recommending, but not for a library. And I'm using the, uh, I'm checking the, uh, the cycles, cycles, in Slint, I'm using some Slint tool to check cycle dependencies. And that tool forced me to split the code in, for example, I had to split DB, some DB, uh, DB definitions from SQL to not have cyclic dependencies, cyclic dependencies. And I had to say, the result is beautiful. If you will Google how to uh, kitchen uh, TypeScript, TypeScript cyclic dependencies, sites of dependencies, you will found you will found anti patterns actually. Anti patterns for uh, I'm using yes, this is what I'm using. Import no cycle, import no cycle from Slint, but if you will look for how to remove cycle dependencies from your TypeScript, you will find some anti-pattern like put everything in your in one file, then reference that file from something else. Uh, and the result is the code, unreadable code. I, it, I think it's more like a hack or something like that. Uh, what I found in the past is usually if you have a if you have a cyclic dependency, it is a design mistake. Yeah. It shows that there is a mistake in the design of the code and that there is a better code organization where that cycle is not present. And that's why F sharp compiler do not allow cyclic dependencies at all. It will not compile and it is good thing like Rust will not allow you to compile something un unsafe. F sharp will not. Yes, but to some extent, uh, let's say cyclic dependencies between files is bad, but cyclic dependency between modules is fine. Because for example, you've got a, you have a, layer module and an effect module in an effect module you have a function that returns a layer in the layer module you have a function that returns an effect that's perfectly okay and you want to call those functions from the 
from the modules. So I wouldn't say that cyclic dependencies per se are a so bad how, design unresolvable. How people, how people can write software with F sharp if F sharp compiler do not allow that uh, cyclic dependencies. And people still write software in F sharp. So to me, it's probably really some code smell, probably hard to figure out, or I don't know, but F sharp compiler will not allow cyclic dependencies, never ever. And Mark Seaman, the functional programmer, programmer extremist kind of, thinks it's a good thing. Maybe, maybe he's wrong. Everything is straight off. I don't know, uh, whatever works, you know, <laughs> yeah, software developer is hard. But, well, I mean, we introduced the discussion saying that we are on a perpetual wrong. Yeah. Faith. We, the, all of us the, are wrong constantly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, the baseline. Yeah. So everything yeah. is a threat of, there's no solution or the threat of. Good. Then I think this was a little longer than, uh, than usual, but it's all extremely interesting. Um, I'm I, in the short. You want to say a few words more? Uh, where where is Evolu going? That's exactly what I wanted to say. Where Evolu is going? Basically, I shaped Evolu for. I hope my future clients, which is a company Satoshi Labs. Uh, You've called the company Satoshi Labs. Satoshi Labs, these are two guys, uh, my friends, this word company from Czech Republic, empowering independence. They made the first uh, hardware wallet and they are super strict about the privacy because the inventor of the world's first hardware, hardware world for secure assets. And basically they are solving the issue, the, their user are storing data for Bitcoin transactions, labels, and they don't have a place where to store those data. So now they are using the Google Drive with encryption, but it's not ideal. So I hope next week we should discuss that Evolu should go to the Trezor and they sold already over 1 million uh, devices. It's a huge market. And if the treasure will use Evolu, it will be a huge market validation to me. And it should allow me to bring the investors. Maybe they, maybe even they should, could be investors. I don't know yet, but I need to, from zero to one, I need to deploy Evolu somewhere in a huge scale and make it really stable, you know, by, by using by many developers. So <clears throat> I hope that Evolu will be used in the Trezor. And that if so, then I will add new features because the main idea to me is the architecture of applications as we are using nowadays, it's suboptimal, it's not ideal. The problem is the applications are arbitrary borders among my own data. I would love to have a local first calendar where I can join local first contacts to local first list of things I have. Imagine if when all application lives, live in one database, I can make cross joins among the application. You see that? I mean, uh, if I think about it, I would love to have a, a local first calendar myself. And, but I wouldn't call it a local first calendar. I would call, I would call it a good calendar app because like any technology, I, I believe when we build products, we should forget about the technology that they're building. One of the great counter arguments I have to many blockchain companies and other uh, types of companies is that the technology is their primary goal. 
you should use this because it's built with. We don't use Facebook because it's built with PHP. We don't use A because it's built with B. We use a service because we like the service and it just so happened that the technology no, they use is perfect. Uh, let me say it in the different words, what I want to make it's uh, open source Apple. Because the Apple is local first company, all the application from the Apple works local first, all of them are encrypted, but there is a huge vendor lock and it's not open source. And if something that didn't work, I can fix it. I don't see what's happening there. So, and not all people are want to be um, depending on Apple hardware or Apple ecosystem. So the future of Evolu is the open source kind of application the Apple is providing. I want to have Evolu calendar, Evolu contacts, Evolu everything open source and pluggable. And last thing, do you know the shit show the mask is doing with Twitter X? is terrible and i sorry i don't want to offend anyone but what that guy is doing with twitter he is erasing likes of people he is suspending accounts of people he did do he doesn't like and so one uh, thing i want to do is i don't want to leave X or Facebook or Instagram because people are there. I, 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 but I don't want to be a victim of some crazy middleman or some something like that. So to me, I want my social network of the future. How I imagine the, sh the social network should work is I would like to publi publish. I write a lot about a lot of things, the economy, about shit coins, and about the money. And I want to publish on my domain and use the Facebook and Twitter, etc., as just a channels, just as a channels to uh, spread my uh, spread my ideas and thoughts. And every Every human person, every human being should do the same. Publish on your own domain. And it would, would, it would work like RSS. If you remember RSS, we should, we should. Yeah, it's, uh, more, it's more a matter of data ownership. You own yes. your post, you've posted in your domain at first and you use the channels as a mean of exactly. interaction. I, I have no problem with an intermediary that carries my message. I have a problem with the intermediary that owns my message. Exactly, okay. exactly. Thank you to formulate it for me, to me, because yes, as, uh, English is hard to me. Every, but exactly, this is my vision. This is my vision. There is a Nobster, there is a Twitter, but I don't, I want, it's data ownership. But first, I need to solve the problem with local first. For decentralization, decentralization this abstract term, it couldn't work without the local first. First, you have to solve the local first. <laughs> Once you solve the local first, you can build on top of that. And I want to have own calendar, own notions, like for notes, own, uh, for example, my medical and health data. I, do, I want to own those data on my hard disk. I have two children and soon they will produce a lot of data and those data will be scattered among data silos about the Facebook, Apple, different places. And if you, and, uh, and those companies are allowing us to open small window to look at our data, but it's not, that's not ownership. So local first must be, is a first task and it must be supported by some big you big company i hope satoshi labs will help me with that mission because it's their mission as well to they do you know what the guy guys are doing they are making their own cpu open source hardware they are uh, that's they, an extreme level there's a extreme level but it's super important there's the last missing piece in their wallet that it's not fully transparent. If they will found a security issue in hardware, there's NDA, 
they cannot say other people, hey, this is a security leak. So, and they, they already have, uh, it's Tropical Square, it's called Tropical Square, this thing. Uh, first, uh, first open secure chip element. Yes. Uh, I won't build Evol on top of this hardware. Uh, because in the future, I think everyone should will have own server. Some because uh, develop, uh, user experience and if you are offline, etc. It should be yes. You can start of Tropic Square, uh, private company, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, why transparency matter? Well, I mean, there's there's definitely points of contact. I hope, I hope they adopt it. Uh, they, will, like... they will, they will succeed because they, they, they are super, super successful with the hardware Bitcoin wallet. Oh, to the record, I think every blockchain technology is a just bullshit and scam. <laughs> every, every, there is no exception. I have, no exception. but sorry. Uh, I have you, stopped you, even, you, even trying to argue against blockchain technologies. I don't, I, there, I don't there is, care. Blockchain is just a bullshit, but the Bitcoin has a point of reason to enter. There, there is a, this is only thing there is a legit. Now, even if it wasn't, they have a hardware. They will have a open source hardware, and I want to evolve. Will because the Evolu mnemonic uh, shouldn't be stored in a browser in like in a, a local SQL like it is. No, I mean like, it, like it, this. it depends because I can. For example, one, one idea I really like that you've described is this idea of uh, open apps. Like, I want to have an open calendar where the size of the, my calendar is not so prohibitive that I cannot store it locally. I can perfectly store my calendar uh, locally. I can share and, it with other and, people. And imagine if you could use a plugins in your calendar to show different business types like the places, things, uh, actions, you, you know, you, there is a huge concept of a personal knowledge base. For example, Notion is trying to be personal knowledge base, uh, different people trying different strategies, but we are missing the, uh, the base layer we can build on top. Of, uh, so I hope the Evolu should become recently I re re uh, renamed Evolu from React Hooks to Evolu Platform. So it's not Evolu React Hooks; it's Evolu Platform. But I made it because it's uh, I split it in a different library, so you can make your uh, own Evolu uh, for SolidJS or or something like that. Uh, and that's the will you tackle other? other more, uh, no, I wouldn't say more complex problems, but would you tackle other complex problems such as, for example, the collaboration elements? Because I, I think if, you, if, if we think about the calendar, okay, what's feature number two I would like on a calendar? Not only for my calendar to sync up between my devices, I would like to share pieces of my calendar with you. I would, I would like to give you privileges to write portions of my calendar in maybe uh, segments where I'm available to meet people, I want so on and so forth. Those are like, I'm just trashing ideas now. Without, without, I'm, without, I'm really without, curious. And being able to do that without the third party and the key for that is a public private cryptograph. Or rather with a, with a thin third party. I, I'm not really against, like I, I may be one of, of the edge cases, but I'm not per se against the third party, as as you described before. Is I publish on third my domain. Third party is okay. It's, third... If it isn't get generic, of course you can use third party, and you will use your third party. But it has to be generic. To yes. or, it has to be generic. Then it's then it's okay, and it doesn't have to hold your data. Then it's okay, and it must to be encrypted, so it doesn't it will not see your data. Then third party is perfectly okay. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd rather Google not knowing where I meet people, when I meet people, and so on <laughs> and so forth. 
So, and, and, the, and the key for it is public private cryptography, and that's definitely uh, in my plans. And it's even described in uh, uh, GitHub issues of Evolu. I'm totally transparent. Every idea I have uh, is in the uh, Evolu issues. Uh, and there is already one uh, local first framework. It was released a few days ago. It's super, super new. It's super, super uh, unfinished, it, uh, but uh, it's called Jess Tools. Some guy from Germany, I think. And he uh, thinking like me uh, about using public private cryptography for these things. Uh, funny thing, Evolu was based on Open PGP, but Open PGP was used. But uh, there is a, a feature like you can subscribe. You will basically you will make some uh, calendar entry, and you can uh, encrypt with public uh, keys of the people who should be able to see that. So the you can enforce something who can write, who can read, etc. with cryptography. So you don't, there doesn't have to be a middleman or third party service which will do it for you. So there is, there, it's possible. No one, I, I would call it, imagine a signal. Do you know signal? Yeah. Imagine a signal for application. It's definitely possible, but uh, <laughs> no one didn't do that yet. But it doesn't mean uh, we can't do that. All ideas start as they are crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I have huge plans for Evolu, and I hope uh, your collaboration with uh, Satish Labs will allow me to fulfill my plans. And if not, I will try to find some uh, uh, other people. I have a lot of friends. They are <laughs> uh, hodlers for a long time, and I, and this, I. You will tell them. <laughs> Let's hope they sold a little bit, otherwise they won't be able to. <laughs> I, I hope. Uh, what do you, what do you, what do you want to do with your uh, fortune? Fortune, just sold the bitcoins and help me to make the software a little bit uh, more uh, better. That's I all. think that <laughs> that's a perfect way to uh, to end this. Um, thank you very much. That, that's been uh, fun to do. I will try out Evolu. Uh, I've, I've started checking the repository. It's, it's well designed. Um, I, I have been recommending Evolu as um, an example of a library that doesn't, that sort of hides its React usage. I, I would say, I would say, it's, as it's, it's, usage. I would say it's done. Uh, I don't, not done from the point of the features, but the features already implemented it's done it i don't plan any big it works the api is supposed to be stable and it's stable for x months x months it's and, stable and I, I think the only <laughs> the only unstable parts of the api is our fault <laughs> <laughs> we might change yes. the scheme and <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's internal things but uh, the people are, are, are Maybe are curious why the Evolu is always uh, <laughs> updating, releasing every second day with the new <laughs> because of the, it's always the patch changes, uh, dependencies has updated. <laughs> but from from the outside, the Evolu is stable. From the inside, it's stable as well. So go read the code. I'm kind of proud of it. I, the, uh, it's super simple. It's the key to me. It's still, it, it was still hard. <laughs> Man, I sold a few Bitcoins too. So it cost me a, a lot of money. <laughs> but, I, I, I know you've been working on this for a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I hope it will succeed. Thank you. Thank you for your work because you, Effect is wheels for Evolu. <laughs> is the wheels is the how it's called when the, it's car and the things uh, under the car. Wheels, wheels, wheels. Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's wheels it's for Evolu. Tires, um, not wheels. The wheel is this. I'm also not native speaker. That's the no, tires. Like basic, it's base layer for, 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 for that. So I'm quite happy with that and. Uh, I wish the effect will be super popular and I will do anything I can for that because the things what I really don't like it's when the people are suboptimal for no reason. 
there's a, if you have a tool, just use it. Damn. Uh, if you have a tool that works, just yeah, use it. it and if, if it works, I think it's stable, or you think it's just polishing the. And the release is <laughs> released version two, so I don't have to update. Uh, uh, we will try to release version two as uh, as soon as it's ready. Uh, Do you? yes. As, as soon as it's uh, ready. Actually, I said release is as quickly as possible, but not more quickly. As fast. But not as more quickly. Not precisely. As fast as possible, but not more more quickly. So, uh, good things takes time. It's natural. Well, again, thank you, and. Um, Bye-bye, bye bye. everybody. Try bye Apple. Bye. Feel free to ask everything in GitHub issues. <laughs>